Photography is so many different things. It's lighting, it's subject, it's composition, but it's also editing. And the same photo can be edited in so many different ways in order to invoke different types of feelings. And there's so many styles of editing. There's that popular teal and orange look, which has been crazy popular on Instagram. There's that dark, grungy, moody style. And then there's that also flatter, more desaturated look that's also so, so popular. And your editing style will invoke different types of feelings in your audience, whether that be curiosity, happiness, fear, or thrill. So today I'm going to show you guys some tips and some tricks that you guys can start using in Lightroom to help you develop your own style and your own aesthetic and help you take some inspiration from the examples that I just shared. And your Instagram feed and your look is going to change over time. The way that my feed looks today is wildly different than what it looked like a year ago. And I think that as my style has developed, my feed has gotten much, much better looking. There are three areas in Lightroom that we are gonna cover today that are gonna help you dial in and really focus on developing your own style. And that's going to be color calibration, which is the most important and the most overlooked, by the way. We're also gonna be taking a look at tone. And finally, we're gonna be taking a look at exposure. So let's kick things off with color calibration. So when you first jump into Lightroom, there's a ton of editing options and it's really easy to just start jumping in and start editing things. So it's really ironic that the most important feature or the most important setting in my opinion, which is color calibration, is actually all the way at the bottom. So this is a fully edited image already, so you're gonna notice that I've already made some adjustments over here. But color calibration is basically where you adjust all of your primary or main colors in Lightroom, which is based off of RGB, so red, green, and blue. And this is basically where you adjust every single color that falls into the spectrum of these specific colors by adjusting the hue. So if you want to create a teal and orange look, like we mentioned, which is really popular on Instagram, this is where you would do it. And you would do it by adjusting the hues in red and blue. So for example, if I push the red hue here to 50 and the blue hue to minus 100, my image now has that more teal and orange look. And obviously the orange part of this is really, really saturated. So if I just dial down a little bit on the saturation end of the orange, then the image becomes a lot more muted and the colors are just a little bit more pleasing to look at. But this is essentially how you attain different types of looks within Lightroom. By playing around with your color calibration panel, you can really set your own style and your own palette of colors that'll help create that own unique style that'll be just, just for you. So this is kind of where you would do that. Another cool trick that I've learned um, over my time editing is that what a lot of editors do is that, so if I reset everything here, whenever they start off with a raw image, what they'll do is they'll come down to color calibration and they'll take the blue saturation and they'll just pump it all the way to 100. And then they'll start editing the image as they would. And basically what that does is that a lot of the colors within that blue spectrum help an image pop if they're really, really saturated. So that just one trick that I've picked up and I've seen a lot of editors do. Next up, let's talk about tone. And basically what tone in an image is, is that it's going to determine how flat or not how flat and how contrasty your image is gonna look overall. And all this stuff is adjusted in the tone curve within Lightroom. Now, you're gonna see a lot of flatter images on Instagram and something that a lot of photographers like to do is that they make their images a lot more flatter or matte, for example, if you wanna call it that. And this is easily achieved in the tone curve. And basically what they'll do is that if I make a point over here in my tone curve um, and I basically move this curve off of the line over here, what it does is that it makes the blacks well less black. So as you can see, as I lift this curve, then the image starts to become flatter. And similarly, I can do the same thing on the white side by creating a point here and taking this line off of the top 
And what it's gonna do is it's gonna take away the pure whites in the image, making them a little bit flatter. And already this just makes the image look a lot more matte, if that makes sense. And then finally, if we wanna add a little bit more contrast to that image, usually what we can do is that we make a point in the middle and we create something called an S curve. So basically you just want this entire curve to look like an S. Now it's already kind of there, but if you want to accentuate the contrast a little bit more, we can take this point that we created earlier, drag it sort of somewhere here. And what this is going to do is that it, this is going to increase the contrast in the highlights. And then we can do the same thing down here. And this is going to increase the contrast in the shadow. So basically just adding some contrast in the darkest and the lightest parts of our image. Now that in combination with us lifting our blacks and our whites really creates that more matte style image that we're going for. Now, if you guys see anything on Instagram that says hashtag moodygrams or anything like that, it's very likely that this is the kind of tricks that they've used. And also if you take a look at Garrett King's photos or short stash, you'll notice that he rarely ever has any pure blacks or any pure whites in his photos. And so this is what he's basically doing. He's lifting the whites and the blacks to make sure that there's no pure blacks or white in his image and they just look a little bit more flatter and a little bit more matte. And finally, let's move on to exposure. And honestly, not everything you do in Lightroom has to be super complicated. So if you want a brighter looking image, then basically, you know, you can just slide the exposure up. And then if you want a darker image, you can slide the exposure down. But you can see just how different these two moods are here if I'm going for a darker image or a lighter image and the style of image based on the brightness of the exposure will greatly determine what kind of feelings your audience basically feels when they're looking at your image or what kind of style of photography you're going for so for example if you're taking a lot of wedding photos which are generally more joyous and happy occasions you want the mood to be bright happy light joyous and basically that's gonna affect your editing style where you're gonna basically want your images to be brighter in most scenarios. You can obviously do some moody wedding photography to show some more dramatic or more cinematic style of photos, but generally people try to keep it light. So depending on the mood and the style you're going for, just adjust your exposure accordingly. And this is one of the more simpler and more obvious adjustments to make in Lightroom, but it is the first one for a reason. It's usually what most people do first, but like we discussed in this video, you generally want to do color calibration first and then work your way up to everything else. And honestly, that's it. If you guys start to use some of these tips and some of these tricks that we discussed today, then you're gonna notice that your editing style is not only gonna improve greatly, but you're gonna start to see the things that you like and you don't like. And that's really gonna push your editing style one way or another. And that's really, really good because that's when you start to develop your own look and your own aesthetic and you start to become unique in the way that you edit your own photos. And it's really, really important to realize that this doesn't happen overnight. It took me almost a year and switching between two or three different styles to really come to the style that I really like and that I use today. So just be patient with it and realize that it doesn't happen overnight. It is going to take some time. And that's it for this video, guys. So hopefully you guys learned something. And if you did, then definitely hit that like button, smash it. It really helps out the video. If you guys are interested in more editing tips, photography, drones, cameras, all that stuff, then definitely subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Other than that, that's all I have for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.